people have asked me about anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish uh, thought and actions. And uh, one person said to me, you know, it seems like anti-Semitism is uh, a topic of a lot of conversation these days. And my response is to say, I don't think it's the topic of enough conversation because a lot of the, the problem that we have with anti-Semitism is the fact that people don't seem to recognize just how widespread it is around the world and how it can show up. I um, mean, if you, if you understand the history of anti-Semitism, then you, you notice these themes and tropes that, that tend to show up from anti-Semites uh, over and over and over again. Uh, the idea that uh, Jewish people are part of a conspiracy, that uh, Jewish financiers uh, around the world are, um, are, are running everything, or sometimes they, they localize it to Jewish financiers in New York or Jewish uh, Jewish uh, movie makers in Hollywood or, or whatever. Sometimes they reference it in terms of maybe a specific person with a Jewish or Jewish sounding name uh, being uh, conspiratorially behind everything. Sometimes it shows up in terms of this question of dual loyalty. Uh, are Jewish people really, uh, really loyal to their countries of origin or do they have uh, loyalties instead to Israel or to uh, to Jewishness itself. And that can even show up with sort of the language, kind of code language of cosmopolitan or rootless uh, Jewish people uh, that shows up over and over again through, through history. Or even more perniciously, uh, the idea, or at least more explicitly, the idea of Jewish people as pests. So you can have uh, this, this, these analogies of termites or uh, or, or other non-human uh, beings as a way to, to slur Jewish people. And that, that can just go on and on and on and on and on. And uh, anti-Semitism is something that shows up on the left and on the right. Sometimes you can even have people who support Israel as a nation, but they're also anti-Semitic. And you say, well, how can that be? Well, sometimes people decide who they hate more and they may hate Jews and Muslims, but they hate Muslims more. So they support Israel, or, or they're not uh, making the connection between Israel and the Jewish people. On the left, uh, you can see this uh, a lot with the idea of, uh, uh, of Jewish people, again, having that dual loyalty, uh, as they will say. Um, you see, in Charlottesville, in the United States, uh, there was uh, the, the chanted line, Jews will not replace us. Uh, which shows up in Europe uh, quite a bit. So when you're looking at anti-Semitism, I mean, in, in history, we see it, as I said, obviously in Adolf Hitler and the Holocaust, uh, but you see it well before uh, World War II and the years uh, leading up to World War II. As a matter of fact, you've got persecution of Jewish people and marginalization of Jewish people uh, taking place in almost every era of history. So how should we as Christians think about anti-Semitism? What I would say first of all is human beings, Christian, not Christian, everything, should oppose anti-Semitism because anti-Semitism is bigotry. It's, it's demonizing of other people who are created in the image of God. But Christians especially ought to be the people who understand just how pernicious anti-Semitism is. And that's because uh, the scripture says we have been brought into the commonwealth of Israel. We have been brought into a Jewish story. Now, sometimes you will have these unlikely uh, allies of uh, liberal Christians and maybe uh, really dispensationalist Christians who will say, well, supersessionism is the problem. And so the idea that there is a newness in the New Testament uh, means or the idea that the church inherits uh, some of the promises made to Israel, that that is itself the root of anti-Semitism. You know, sometimes you can even see that with people who are reluctant to use the language of Old Testament because that implies that the New Testament uh, expands upon it. I, I disagree. Uh, I think that if you see how God works, God works by narrowing, expanding, narrowing, expanding. So the biblical story, God starts with one man uh, and one woman, Adam and Eve, and then expands out to the human race. 
And then in Genesis 11, 12, and so forth, and going forward, God narrows down again to Abram, who initially is a Gentile, a pagan. Uh, he, he's, not, uh, he's not of Israel, uh, anachronistically uh, titled, but according to the flesh. But God brings him in, he becomes Abraham, and then from him come 12 tribes. And then out from that, the entire nation of Israel. And so God is with them through exile. He gives to them and, and back. He gives to them a, a law is the English word uh, that we use, but a, a Torah. He gives, them, uh, he gives them a word that orders life and also explains the holiness of God. So Romans 1 through 3 comes through and says, every Gentile is a lawbreaker. Gentiles non-Jewish people have the law, know there's a God, rebel against him anyway. Then turns around and says, every Jewish person, also a sinner, uh, has a law, rebels against that law. And Romans 1 through 3 narrows this down to one person who is a law keeper, Jesus of Nazareth, Jewish man, who saves both Jew and Gentile, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. Now, the problem is sometimes people will say, well, Jesus was Jewish, as though that's past tense. Jesus is Jewish. Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still, um, is still a Galilean. Jesus is still of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is still circumcised. When Jesus, after his resurrection from the dead, uh, speaks to Saul of Tarsus on the road, of Damas to the road to Damascus, he identifies himself as Jesus, Jewish name, of Nazareth, Jewish town. Uh, so Jesus is Jewish right now, which means if you have a problem with Jews, you have a problem with Jesus. And you and I were adopted into a Jewish family. And what Paul teaches in Romans 9 through 11 is this is still a Jewish family. Uh, you, you have the children of Abraham, they, they come in through faith. Uh, Paul demonstrates that's always uh, been the case. And the Gentiles come in and are grafted onto that Jewish, uh, that Jewish branch, that Jewish root coming from uh, the Jewish people. So sometimes when you have, uh, you have these anti-Semitic uh, attempts throughout history, they want to use Christianity. They sometimes try to hide the Jewishness of Christianity. So the, the German Christian uh, movement, for instance, wanting to get rid of those Jewish words uh, like hallelujah and amen and, and, and so forth. But even just sometimes in the pictures uh, that are used where, uh, where you have Jesus appearing as though he were a Northern European rather than a Middle Eastern Jew. And sometimes when people say Christian, uh, what they're meaning is not those who've been born again through faith in Christ. What they're meaning is white European as opposed to Jewish or Muslim. Well, that's not what Christianity is uh, in terms of the New Testament. And you know, sometimes people will also, anti-Semites will like to come in and use the crucifixion of Jesus and suggest, well, Jews killed Jesus. Well, Rome killed Jesus and people usually aren't anti-Italian. Uh, the, the message of the New Testament is not that one group of people killed Jesus. It's that humanity as a whole killed Jesus and used the levers of state and religion and family and everything else. So if you're a Christian, then that means that you're saying some Jewish words like Jesus, Yahweh saves. It means you're coming into a text in the New Testament itself that cannot be made sense of without understanding all the allusions and echoes, uh, not to mention the direct uh, uh, citations from the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament. So if somebody hates Jews, they hate Jesus too. We're not the people who are called to blood and soil nationalism. We're the people who are called to the gospel of Jesus Christ, which means if people hate Jews, they hate our rabbi too. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Do you agree, do you disagree with what we talked about today? Let me know in the comments below. 
Also, let me know what you'd like for us to talk about in the future on this channel. And don't forget to like or share this video if you found it helpful. And make sure that you subscribe and hit notifications so that you can get all of our new videos when they release.